Welcome back to the Lions Den Academy. Here today, we're gonna to be doing our part two um, video um, for our last study on Matthew chapter five, verses 27 to 30. Um, today, we're specifically gonna be focusing on verses 29 and 30 um, and covering over our battle plan um, to combat lust, porn, and, and affairs. Um, now, if you happen to miss part one, um, I will link that right here. Um, so feel free to check that out because that kind of goes over the, the base groundwork that we're going to be ex expanding upon in today's video. Um, so that being said, let's dive right into the scripture here. So uh, verses 29 to 30 of chapter 5 of Matthew says, If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better for you to lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell. So here Jesus is quite obviously using a figure of speech and not speaking literally. Unfortunately though, not everyone has always been able to discern that and people have literally mutilated themselves in an effort to be more holy. Um, while it is a figure of speech, um, Jesus definitely wants us to fully understand the seriousness that we should take in our attitude towards sin, especially lust. Um, Jesus also paints quite a harrowing image of hell without even describing it. Um, I mean, if it's a place so terrible, I would be advised to pluck my eye out and chop my arm off just to avoid going there, um, then that's definitely a place that I don't want to visit for any period of time. Additionally, even if we were to take this passage literally, it simply wouldn't go far enough to fully achieve its purpose. Even if you did cut off your hand or gouge out your eye, you could still sin with your other hand or eye. And when all those are gone, you're still left with your mind, which is of course where all sinful thought comes from. Um, so, Jesus here is simply stressing the point that we must be willing to sacrifice in order to be obedient. Um, if there is a part of our life that is sinful and it leads us into temptation and sinful thoughts and desires, we must then recognize that it is more profitable for that part of our lives to die and be cut off from us rather than to condemn our whole life and then live accordingly. So, that was what Jesus was teaching us here and in this brief part on Less Than the Sermon on the Mount. Um, so. That being said, sex and lust, they come up quite frequently all throughout the Bible. Um, and you know, we're definitely gonna expand them on things further as they do come up. But you know, now that we're here on this topic, I, I kinda wanna shift into a you know, thorough battle plan, you know, biblically sound one, um, on how we can overcome lust, lust and avoid porn and affairs. Um, like I've said, I put a lot of time and research into this and having battled this myself, it's my hope that you know, for people either that are currently in a relationship or people that will be in a future relationship, um, that this will truly help you. I'm not only have an extremely solid foundation, um, um, in your relationship, but that also your relationship just thrives like never before. Um, God gave us our innate sexual desire for the purpose of a magical and bonding act that connects man and wife in a unique, amazing, and extremely satisfying way. However, that same sexual desire can absolutely be used um, sinfully, and it can turn to an all-consuming force that can drastically lead you away from God and His calling on your life. So, if we are in agreement with that, then what we need is a battle plan on how we can avoid this sin and have it, it having any influence over our lives. Um, because this is absolutely a battle that we all face, right? And with this sin and, and, and with all the rest. Um, and as Ephesians 6, 11 through 12 shows us, um, we should put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. So make no mistake, we are at war. Um, and unless you're James Bond or Liam Neeson. Hey, and don't even get me started on that one when they took his daughter. Straight tookin, starring Liam Neeson. And Liam Neeson's on the phone like, I have a certain set of skills. Sure. You simply do not fight a battle alone. Um, so the first step in your battle plan is having a couple of trusted same-sex Christians in your life that you are fully open with and can trust completely. Um, now that is an easy thing to say, um, but for most of us, especially men, um, it's way less easier to do. Um, since in general, men are just absolutely terrible about fully, oh, fully opening up and sharing their burdens. Uh, for example, if a couple that's friends with another couple, um, that, that couple was going through a divorce, if the wife of couple one had dinner with the wife of couple two, and then the husband of couple one hung out with the husband of couple two, Afterwards, the wife of couple one would know the ins and outs of the reasons for the divorce, the counseling sessions they've gone through, the emotional roller coaster that wife two has been going through. 
Um, and, and as well as wife who's complete plans on how she plans to live her life with her, both for her, her, her and her kids after the divorce. Wife one will also then be completely shocked when she asks about how husband two is doing um, to her husband. And the only response that she can get is, I don't know, we don't want to talk about it. Or yeah, that's a bummer, he's pretty upset. Um, that's about the extent of the sharing that men will do, even when they're facing the most extreme circumstances of their life. Um, now, th the thought of sharing our innermost issues and struggles with our closest friends can be absolutely terrifying. Um, after all, we've spent a good deal of time you know, building and developing that relationship with them. And the last thing that we want to do is to open ourselves up for only for them to, to think that you are cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and decide that they no longer want anything to do with you. Um, I would personally say though that if your friends walk away from you because of a soul bearing and honest conversation about what's going on with you, then they really aren't your friends. Um, however, if you do feel uncomfortable with that, um, fortunately most churches these days do have small groups that you can join and they can pair you up with some, some new, you know, great Christian friends that are, are all there to open up and share. Um, and usually these groups that, you know, it's all based around, you know, a similar interest, whether that's, you know, motorcycle riding, working out, you name it. Um, and you just be in that setting, doing something that you enjoy and, and being fully open and transparent. Um, <clears throat> So that being said, uh, I, I mean, I, I personally can't tell you how many amazing friends you know, I've gained through joining and leading different groups throughout the years. Um, accountability relationships like these, they're not simply to help you sweep up the mess after you've made a mistake, though. Um, they are there so that you push one another to continue to grow in Christ and help one another from steering into sin in the first place. Um, this accountability should also be actively, should ideally be proactive and not reactive. Um, take, for example, a spotter at the gym, right? Um, they watch the person performing the exercise. And if they see them start to struggle and can sense that they won't be able to complete the lift, then they're going to step in and provide the extra mu muscle to put the barbell safely back um, on the rack. Now, an experienced lifter and one that knows their own capabilities will know when they're at a point that they can't complete a lift. And you can usually hear them say, help, when they need a spot spotter to step in. Um, and that would be comparable to a Christian that knows their struggle with lust or any other sin. And, you know, if they feel an urge to, you know, reply to a DM they shouldn't or find themselves drifting to Pornhub, then they should stop what they're doing and call a friend to share what's going on and get some guidance, which is an example of proactive accountability. Um, on the other hand, if you see, you know, a newbie at the gym uh, with a spotter, you're likely going to see them using weights that are way too much for them, and they usually don't have the self-awareness of their capabilities or limitations, which, hey, no big deal. You know, we all have to start somewhere. Um, but unless the spotter is completely on their game, um, that barbell is likely going to go to their chest or the floor before they have a chance to step in and help their partner out. And this can be comparable to a Christian that is naive about their susceptibility to lust and doesn't take the proper steps to avoid temptation or giving into it, um, and instead finds himself constantly stumbling with mistakes. Now, while accountability should be ideally proactive, um, usually we don't start at that stage where we have the awareness and control to be at that point. Um, so I don't want to be, be misconstrued by saying that reactive accountability is bad. Um, just like in the analogy we mentioned, you don't start out at the gym you know, being fully aware of, of your body and knowing its limitations and all that. Just like when we're, we're starting out as Christians, we don't usually have the grasp on our weaknesses or temptations either. Um, but just as how you, if, if you continue to develop yourself at the gym, you know, it's an awareness that grows. Um, so does your awareness grow as a Christian when you not only continue your walk with Christ, but also as you can, you know, continue to open up, confess your sins, struggles, and weaknesses with others. Um, one other thing that you will also end up noticing is that as you develop yourself as a Christian, there's going to be quite obviously a demonic element of, of, to desires of sexual deviancy and porn at certain points in your life. Um, a leverage point or critical, critical juncture, if you will. Um, so hear me out. <laughs> uh, one of these leverage points is going to be the initial bait or lure that enticed you sexually in the first place. Um, it could be a pop-up on the computer, a girl from school that got around and had no morals, or uh, conversely, a guy at school that convinced you that if you truly loved him, you would do X, Y, or Z with him, um, or an exposure to a sex scene from a movie or porn, or unfortunately even things like childhood molestation. Um, all these things are things that Satan thrives on, and he likely remembers each of them like a highlight reel as he recollects uh, on how he set his hook in you initially. And there's absolutely nothing accidental about them. 
While that's the first leverage point, let's take a look at biblical examples of these, you know, when these leverage points come. Um, so if we take a look at the, the book of Nehemiah in the Old Testament, um, the person in, that the book is named after, Nehemiah, um, is charged with the task of rebuilding the destroyed wall of Jerusalem. Now, other than the difficult task of building this, um, there's a spiritual attack waged against Nehemiah through Satan's puppet, Sambalat. Now, if you read the story, um, and it's a fairly short book with only like 13 chapters, um, if, you, if you know when the attacks occur, um, they're at the beginning of the project, halfway through the project, and then right near the end. Um, these are quite naturally the times that we feel the most stressed, exertion, and fatigue on any project, and Satan exploits that to his advantage. Additionally, though, other than the natural fatigue from the stress at the beginning, middle, and end, Satan will also look to attack you when you're physically, emotionally, or mentally at risk. Um, you may have had a terrible day, spilt your coffee on your shirt, had a fight with your spouse, lack of sleep, or struggle with an attorney for getting your kids ready for school and out the door. Um, regardless of what it is, if you're stressed out and worn down, Satan will try to prey off the past painful experiences being triggered in your life, triggering lies that you believe about yourself, God, and others. So now let's talk about a specific plan for battling lust, specifically in regards to porn. Um, like I said before, porn can be extremely addictive and it does nothing good for you. Um, and unlike back in the day when you had to go to a bookstore and you know, buy a magazine or go to the curtain off little section of Blockbuster um, and then have a cashier ring up a rental of an X-rated movie, uh, nowadays all it takes is pulling up the internet browser on your computer or phone. Um, now, if you happen to be someone that doesn't have an issue with wanting to look at porn, then fantastic. Just keep on doing what you're doing. Um, if you happen to be struggling with fighting that urge, though, um, and it's something that you have a repeated pattern of falling back into, I would definitely advise taking some additional steps to make sure that you are completely clear of this trap. Um, just like how you wouldn't go into battle without proper gear, um, you shouldn't go into battle against porn without proper gear either. Um, there are several programs that you can download, such as like Covenant Eyes, that literally prevent you from accessing explicit websites. Um, I know that I, the idea might sound crazy and restrictive um, to you, but you know if you truly want to live by Christ's commands and you are unable to do that without any additional assistance, it just makes total sense to, you know, putting that 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 barrier in there so that it's not even a possibility for you. Um, and now, I mean, it's, it's an extreme example, right? But if you had an issue of relapsing into heroin use, uh, wouldn't it make sense to make sure that there's no remote way of, of at all possible that you could access heroin? Um, it, it, like making sure there's none in your house. <laughs> um, so uh, that about sums, sums it up for, for porn, right? Um, that's all you really need. Uh, if you can't avoid it on your own, um, and you get the accountability partner, um, and then also you use the, the programs that prevent you from any way of having access to it. All right, and then the other thing that you can do to really avoid porn is by simply switching your focus away from it. Um, if I were to tell you to stop thinking about the color orange, you can't help it, but you're going to be thinking about the color orange. And when you try to fight something uh, and fight the urge and, and, and resist against it, you're really focusing on it, but in a negative way. Um, so, for example, like if you have anxiety about something, it's because you're constantly thinking about it and thinking about it. Um, so the, the key is to switch your focus to something else. Um, usually that means you're going to need to, to get up and get away from any sort of screen um, and then you know, go mow the yard, go work out, um, go spend time with your, your kids, focus the attention on your wife or husband instead. Um, just switch your focus to something completely different and then, and then be active with that. Um, you know, take a cold shower if you need to, you name it. Um, so that being said, the key to avoiding porn, accountability partners, absolutely. Um, that can also help you from, from an affairs standpoint as well. Um, and then the, uh, the, there's definitely the programs that you can use to make sure that it's not even a possibility. Um, but then if you're not one to do that, um, just make sure that you're, you're, you're switching your focus whenever the thoughts or desires come up. Um, and, and that pretty much sums about sums up all that you need to completely avoid avoid porn honestly um now there's quite a few other things though that you can do that will not only help you avoid the possibility of having an affair um but that also when applied um it can help your relationship with your spouse or your significant other thrive like never before um, because you're gonna be communicating better and you know really fulfilling each other's needs and that's really what i want to start at um is, is talking about the needs that both you and your partner have and no i'm not talking about the cliche 
you know, men have physical needs and women have emotional needs. Both women and men have need both of those. I'm talking about the need to feel loved by your partner. And that is expressed, uh, both expressed and received um, in, the, in five different ways. Um, as Dr. Chapman describes in his book, The Five Love Languages, um, he explains that the five primary love languages are words of affirmation, quality time, physical touch, acts of service, and receiving gifts. Um, you can check out the book if you want, but I would at the very least recommend that you and your, your partner go to his the website. Um, you can take a free quiz and it really helps you determine what truly makes you feel loved um, and what makes your, your, your partner feel loved. And you might be really shocked at how little you know yourself when it comes to that answer. Um, I really thought, and maybe it was from the cliche I mentioned, um, that my result would be physical touch. Um, however, um, mine is actually quality time. Um, now that brand, now that brand knows about me, now that brand knows that about me, um, she's able to consciously use that information um, to make sure that my love cup cup is never running empty. And since I know that her love language is words of affirmation, I can do the same for her. Now you might be thinking, well, okay, you're telling me how to make sure that my partner's fully loved. But how does that help me? Well, if you haven't learned this lesson yet, I promise you that it will change your relationship for the better. Um, the more that you make your partner feel loved, and, and, and I, I mean, really make them feel loved in the way that makes them tick through their love language, um, the more they naturally want to do the exact same for you. Um, for example, if your wife has an acts of service as the way that she you know, feels loved the most, if you take off of work and you deep clean the house and do with the laundry, you may very well be just surprised at how well loved up you get that night. Um, so if you and your significant other follow what I just mentioned, um, your relationship should be fairly well fair proof um, from that alone, just from your needs being fully met. Like I mentioned, one of the, one of the reasons of affairs happening is, is unmet needs. Um, and usually it's not a, a sexual need or anything like that. So um, that being said, um, we are all, though, at risk of losing our focus um, and being swept up into a physical or emotional affair. So I do want to share a couple of other principles that can help you safeguard your marriage alongside that. Uh, number one, um, stay completely honest with both yourself and your spouse. Um, easier to say than do, but it is absolutely necessary. Uh, second, uh, try to see your relationships and interactions with other people from your spouse's perspective. Um, anytime you're interacting with someone from the opposite sex, either in person or electronically, try to imagine that your spouse is right there watching and listening in. If you think that a text, a comment, a like, an interaction would make them uncomfortable, then that's a pretty good gauge that you should back off. Um, third, do not flirt period. Um, most affairs usually start with what pe some people call innocent flirting. However, that is a complete oxymoron since there's no such thing. Um, flirting is not and should be a part of any relationship. Um, other than your, and then fourth, uh, other than your relationship with God, keep your marriage as your number one priority. Um, that might sound counterintuitive if you have kids, um, but it definitely applies there as well. Um, the absolute best thing that you can do for your kids is to provide them with a, a home that has a very strong marriage. Not only does this provide them with a strong familiar, familiar, familial unit that has one voice and works together in a loving fashion, um, it also sets an example for them of what a healthy relationship should look like. Um, fifth, um, set boundaries about how you and your partner will react with the opposite sex. Um, this should be the areas that you do not want to blur at all. Um, boundaries, they're, they're absolutely necessary for guarding against lust. Um, and not just identifying them, but keeping them at all cost. Um, the, um, and this is... I cut that together. Um, there are some boundaries that are fairly universal. Um, but you and your spouse or partner should you should be the ones that really determine what the boundaries should be for your relationship. Um, and that should be done through an in-depth and open conversation. Um, you should both focus on uh, situations that both make you or them feel uncomfortable, as well as situations that you or they feel might be a stumbling block or you know possible trap or temptation for them. Um, while the, the boundaries, like I said, should be determined by you all, um, here are some boundaries that me and Brand keep just as an example, uh, and maybe as a conversation starter for you and your partner. Uh, 
Number one, uh, we don't spend one-on-one -on -one time um, with people of the opposite sex other than when absolutely necessary for, for things like work. Um, and just to clarify, spending a break or having a lunch with a colleague would not be considered necessary. Um, secondly, we do not give our numbers out or take numbers from people of the opposite sex, once again, unless absolutely required by work or something like that. Um, third, we don't go out to any place like a bar or a club by ourselves, and we don't do girls' night out or boys' night out or anything like that. Uh, fourth, we openly share any conversation or interaction that we know that the other person would want to know about. And fifth, um, we know each other's phone passwords and we're both a complete open book to each other. And sixth, um, kind of a big one for, for most couples, um, should definitely be a boundary around there for probably uh, you somewhere in this regards, but um, in regards to social media, um, I, I personally, for one, I, I don't have a personal account, I have the Lions Den Academy account. Um, and that, that's just because you know, I know that it can be a stumbling block for me. So that's a decision that, that I've made. Um, it, it took even quite a bit of deliberation and discussion to create the Lions and Academy one, but since it's for God's purpose, um, it, you know, it, but Brian has, you know, we decided, decided to go ahead and do it. Um, Brian has the login information. She's logged in as well though. So, um, it, it, it helps with that, that accountability and just making sure it's, it's not an issue or, or couldn't be one. Um, and so that being said, I, I know that these boundaries, they might feel like limitations um, that can feel like they're stealing away your freedom. Um, but I promise though that um, instead they actually give you the freedom to live purposely in your God-ordained call. Um, to, and, and it also helps you experience a relationship that's full of grace and, and mutual respect. And with that, we will wrap up today's video. It's been great being back with you here today. I'm, I'm so excited to be continuing to share God's word with you. Um, I, I, Glad to be getting back on track here and, and look to be pushing out as many videos as I can here as quickly as possible. Um, once again, got some other stuff in the pipeline, um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, make sure you click the subscribe button and notification bell if you don't want to miss any further Bible studies here at the Lion's Den Academy. Uh, but with that being said, you have a great day. God bless you and keep you. I look forward to seeing you next time.